Tear Down Time. What is this gorgeous looking photograph? Uh, it's a printhead from a label maker. I uh, had a brother PT90 uh, in my home and it uh, finally stopped working after a number of years. Uh, it makes these kind of labels here. They're basically formed through a uh, thermal process. If you heat this tape up, uh, it'll uh, turn black. Okay, so this is the uh, printhead here. And uh, what you can see on the left hand side is a, a ragged cut because I just uh, cut it out of the assembly. Uh, this uh, yellow material is called Kapton. It basically forms a flexible printed circuit board. Uh, nine conductors on this side here, uh, driving into this assembly. You can see the print head here has uh, several dozen signals going to it. Uh, and of course, uh, this black blob will hide an integrated circuit. Uh, of course, uh, that's the whole purpose here. You don't want to draw several dozen signals across a flexible cable because uh, that's fairly expensive and unreliable. You also need to create some power here uh, to actually cause the thermal effect. This uh, black stripe, uh, believe it or not, is a, a resistor. It's uh, screen printed and it forms the heart of the assembly. It basically heats up and causes the tape to uh, turn black. Uh, but we're getting a bit ahead of ourselves. Uh, let's first uh, look at this uh, integrated circuit here uh, on the next photograph. It's uh, just a gorgeous photograph. Um, I really like this one. It's uh, basically a, a ceramic uh, substrate. Uh, and you can see lots of gold plating uh, assembly. You can see an integrated circuit in the center here. And you can see then a bunch of lines going out this direction here uh, to uh, the printer strip here. And uh, this is the connection back to the uh, Capton. Let's take a look at the integrated circuit though because that really tells us what's uh, going on. Um, Actually, pardon me, just before I look at the integrated circuit, we're going to take a zoom in to uh, one of these uh, print portions here just to sort down how this works. Uh, basically what happens is the printer uh, has a ground line here. So these are all grounded basically. And then each of the scan lines is here. And what happens, you can see the scan line passes under the conductive uh, resistor. And, uh, and then it's bounded by two ground traces. So of course, if you put a voltage here, what will happen is the current's going to flow this way, it's going to flow this way, and essentially it's going to heat up just this section of the resistor, and of course that will cause the tape to discolor. Uh, very clever, of course, since there's now ground traces on each side of the uh, assembly, should you drive this scan line, of course, it'll go this way and heat up only this area as well, and so on as we go down the assembly. So, very clever. Now, of course, to do this, you have to create a, a fairly high current on this assembly here, and drive it towards. So, uh, and of course, that's the purpose of uh, this integrated circuit here. Now we're looking at the uh, the whole integrated circuit. You can see the bond wires here, which go to the scan lines. Uh, these little areas here, these little rectangles, basically power up FETs. They all uh, drive current this way, because of course you need a fair bit of current to cause the tape discolor. And then what you're looking at here is 8 bit, 16 bits, 16 bits, 16 bits, and 8 bits. And uh, what there is a combination of uh, shift register and uh, latches. So let's uh, zoom into one of these sections here just to sort that down a little bit clearer. And um, what we're looking at uh, just at a slight angle here. Um, this, of course, is the power fed here. And then, of course, you can see uh, basically a, a D flip flop register or about much logic for that. So basically, uh, the data comes into this pin here. And then uh, each of these is basically a shift register. So the data gets shifted down here. And then when it hits the bottom here, it gets latched across and causes this D flops to hold the state. And then this gets converted to a power transistor, which has the capability to drive the scan line. And basically then you get uh, the scan uh, pump, pumps out a bunch of pixels. Now, while it's discoloring the tape on that side here, this shift register, of course, will be receiving new data gets shifted across and then it out goes. So it's just exactly what you expect. So uh, a really neat little specialized circuitry. Uh, otherwise, if you just look at the ends of the chips, you can see some uh, indication of uh, some die marks. Uh, it doesn't show which foundry made it, but uh, I'm sure this was a custom part for the uh, brother because I'm sure they pump out these label makers by the uh, the millions. Uh, they are darn handy devices. So and just look some sort of power distribution on this side here. So kind of what you'd expect in terms of the uh, controller die and uh, how it's been assembled. And of course, you get this, uh, just a, a wonderful photograph. Uh, if you want to see these photographs, of course, I'll put them on my blog, electronupdate.blogspot.com. Uh, this is just a, a beautiful looking assembly. Let's uh, keep on going. Let's take a look at the actual circuit boards that were in the assembly. 
so two circuit boards, obviously a keyboard. Uh, the black material is conductive ink and uh, the conductive uh, dome keyboard sits on top and of course that makes contacts. A really great example of how to do an inexpensive keyboard. Main controller board here, uh, then of course we have the uh, LCD panel here. Uh, we'll zoom into the actual circuit board here now because there's actually a few things that are of interest and uh, we'll talk about the semiconductors which are probably worth uh, de-encapsulating and taking a better look at. Okay, so here's the uh, main controller marked Panasonic. Uh, has an interface to the keyboard, goes to the monitor and the printhead, so uh, undoubtedly has some sort of microcontroller sitting here. We'll de-encapsulate this one, see what it looks like. Associated with it uh, are some power supply components, some simple transistors, won't be too exciting to look at from a semiconductor viewpoint. But this part marked UTC will be, it'll be some sort of uh, voltage regulator. Let me take that one apart, we'll uh, do that. Uh, let's see, well this is kind of interesting here. Uh, these pads here allow the uh, board to be configured at the factory. You can just sort of put a little bit of solder onto your tip of a solder iron and touch it. And because I've got a zigzag here, it'll actually bridge over very easily. And it's a good way to do factory configuration. Uh, you can see, of course, it's marked for uh, help for assemblers in uh, China. I'm pretty sure that's the word for red, and I'm pretty sure that's the word for black. Uh, of course, allowing them to get the leads to be soldered on correctly. Um, up here, of course, you can see the automated bonding to the uh, LCD display. Um, interesting enough, you would have thought this microcontroller would, of course, control the uh, LCD as well. Uh, but that's not the case. If you flip it over, you can now see that there is a, a blob here basically hiding the controller for the LCD. So we'll take this one apart as well because I'm sure that'll be quite interesting. Okay, uh, let's take a look at this 8-pin uh, dip, the simplest semiconductor on the assembly. I thought it was power supply related, but uh, I see that it says UTC and has a partner BA2220. And uh, if you chase on the internet, you can realize this is actually a, a motor driver. Uh, it actually has a funny name on the data sheet, but uh, they call it a general use electronic governor. But uh, if you read down here, you can see it says it was developed for speed control of general use DC motors. Now, of course, a label maker has a motor in it to push the label out. And that would imply this is probably the motor generator. And if you look at the actual block diagram, you can see it's a pretty straightforward assembly. Uh, pardon me, a pretty straightforward design. It's got an op amp. Got a couple of power transistors because of course an op amp can't drive a motor directly it needs some sort of power function it drives out to this motor here and the other function you can see of course is a, uh, a band gap reference it says vref here uh, and it'll be a band gap so we should be able to find an op amp a couple of power transistors and some sort of reference on the actual semiconductor and if we zoom into it of course uh, sure enough it's uh, fairly easy to see that one transistor here one transistor here uh, let's see, it looks like this is the connector going this way. It puts the op amp, of course, in the center of the die, as you might expect. And looking for some PNP transistors for voltage reference. This is a uh, bipolar process, so PNPs are usually used that. I would guess this is probably the reference sitting here on uh, the band gap. Uh, as always, I'll put this photograph also on the blog so you can take a look at it. All the transistors, of course, very visible uh, and very easily sorted down and this kind of a process node. Okay, let's push on to the more complicated assemblies. Okay, we're looking at, uh, I believe, the LCD controller. It's a fairly straightforward node. Uh, again, a little too simple probably for a microprocessor, but right for controlling uh, a LCD. Uh, let's just go into a zoomed-in section here with uh, more of the logic visible, uh, so I can sort down my reasoning. Uh, this is just the mosaic of some of the internal logic gates, and uh, you can see there's a, a small memory structure here, which might be good for a frame buffer. Uh, otherwise, you know, you're looking at like rows of gates here, and, and only you know hundreds at most of gates. So probably not quite enough for a microprocessor of the uh, era that we're looking at, but uh, definitely enough for an LCD display. Uh, there actually is a, a die mark on the assembly. I don't know uh, who makes this, but uh, there is this one here. Uh, same thing in terms of uh, the age of the process. It looks like it's um, uh, fairly, you know, micron level type things. So you can see, of course, the actual via still uh, on this one here. Uh, I'm sure this chip's probably been in production for uh, a tremendous number of years. Uh, even though I hear about like deep sub micron, uh, you know, assemblies for like really sophisticated nodes, some of these older uh, semiconductors for things like driving LCD panels really haven't changed probably in 20 years. Um, and uh, probably are still very much in production. It's still very viable because you have uh, fabs where you've paid off all the capital, so these uh, dies are only worth pennies at most and, of course, have uh, exceptionally high yields. Okay, so if this is the LCD panel, I think the next die must be the microcontroller. Let's find out. Okay, final die. Pretty sure this is the uh, actual uh, 
microprocessor plus controller peripherals. Uh, you can sort of see there's a fairly significant number of bond pads and uh, you can see like there's some area of logic here, you know, significant area of logic here, fairly significant RAM uh, and ROM here, and uh, some sort of uh, more of a utilities function down here, and uh, very appropriate. Uh, same thing, I'll throw this onto the blog and uh, you can uh, take a look at it at your leisure. Uh, yeah, peripherals here definitely run the screen. Lots of logic there. Yeah. And of course, we see things like this. They're basically uh, macro functions. Basically, uh, you get a library function, you put it down. And they do that either because that part of the function is running really, really fast. You know, it's called a hard macro, or it's like an analog uh, feature. You definitely don't want the uh, auto router routing it. So, anyways, that is the semiconductors you can find in a label maker from Brother. Uh, as I mentioned, I have uh, all the photographs of this particular teardown, plus usually some additional details uh, that fit better in a written text format on my blog, electronupdate.blogspot.com. Uh, and I'd like to mention, of course, I have a Twitter account like all the cool kids have these days. Uh, I think my handle is electronupdate1, so if you want to see when I publish a new video, uh, you can do it there. Uh, if you like this video, please uh, give it a thumbs up, and uh, we'll see you on the next teardown.